So he's played in every game this season so far, and that's kind of been where he's been after seven or eight years for Tottenham. If, he, if he's fit, he plays. Mm. Given he's thirty-two, is, and now you've got a European campaign, is that sustainable? That he can no. No, and and I think you know, again, I think unfortunately for us, not unfortunately, but you know, I, I would have wanted to ease his sort of workload this early part of the year. But like I said, we lost Richie, then we lost Dominic, then we lost Wilson, and you know, it's, again, invariably in football, sometimes it's not the amount of injuries; it's the kind of injuries you get. So he's played more than I think. I certainly want him to, and, and the idea, I mean, you know, like I said, signing Dom and, and, and bringing in Wilson and, you know, uh, uh, extending Timo's loan was that we could sort of give him, uh, manage his load because he's got international football as well a little bit better. And um, and it's something that I'm mindful of. It's just the circumstances so far. And, and Sonny always wants to play. I mean, that's his attitude, but we've got to be sensible about it. And I don't think it's got to do so much with his age because I, I haven't seen that affect him. It's more, I just don't think that kind of workload in, in the modern game is sustainable. You need to, you know, we've spoken a lot about you know, fixture overload. Well, and I think I said last week that part of that responsibility, I guess, lies with us whilst the calendar is like this to try and protect our players and um, and certainly with, with Sonny we're going to have to be mindful of that. And like you say, he, he would be of the mindset to want to play on yeah. the So have you spoken with him about how together you can manage it rather than you just making decisions or is it something you just do on your own? Yeah, um, no, I, I, I tend to not make decisions by consensus. I think it gets really a bit more gap, yeah. 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 No, I, no, I know what you're saying, but I, I think, you know, when you've got a player like Sonny, I think, you know, I've had experience with guys like that before, they, they're always just going to want to play. And, and, you know, do I want to dull that competitiveness by having a reasoned discussion over him, you know, with a cup of tea and saying, Sonny, this is going to be great for you, great for me? No, I'd rather I leave him out and he's disappointed with me because I think that's that's what you want in him. And, and sometimes, you know, it's like doing something for somebody's own good. I just think... You know, that's my decision, my responsibility. I've got to take that on board. And is there, just finally on this, is there a challenge there for the rest of the team and the squad <coughs> to cope without him? Because he's such an influence, mm. not just as a player, but as the character as well, and the leader on the pitch. Is there a challenge there to, be, to cope without him? Well, I think, I think there's an opportunity there, yeah, because I think that's what you want to try and create. I mean, it's why we've got this leadership group is to see, well, you know, who does, who can step step up in that kind of scenario because, um, you know, it, it will happen from time to time. And um, I think that was a pleasing thing last night, you know, that, that sort of when he went off, Vic took the armband and he almost seemed to, to relish that kind of responsibility to grow. And sometimes you don't see these things unless there's opportunity. So, um, so yeah, so there, there, there's definitely a, an opportunity there for us to, to show that we can sort of still be the team we want to be, even though he may not be um, you know, involved as much. Tom. Ed, um, <coughs> back to what you were saying about the spinning of the wheel and the pressure. Um, I mean, you had a bit of it earlier in the season. It feels like Everton Hard has it every week, um, which must be quite tricky to, to, to deal with, always being the eye of the storm. Can you give us an insight into what it's like to have to cope with that kind of scrutiny? Oh, look, it's hard for me to say because I, I think everyone sort of deals with it differently. Um, but it is just, you know, you, you have to understand that it's just, you know, part of your existence these days as a manager. I mean, I know, I don't know, coin the phrase that said it's the impossible job, but I, I think it's become even more impossible now because it seems like, you know, Success is not enough if it doesn't have identity. Identity is not enough unless it's followed by, you know, aesthetics. Aesthetics are not enough unless it's followed by legacy. Like, it, there's always another layer that's, you know, there's, it seems like no one's doing a good job, you know, unless you win the comp and at the end of the year there's... So, you know, there's, there doesn't seem to be any sort of understanding of 
progress or the circumstances that people have to work under at times. It's, but it's just the nature of the role. So I don't think that's going to change. So it's, I guess it's how you respond to it, how you react to it, how you let it affect you. Um, you know, I think the more experience you have, the better maybe you deal with these things. Uh, although, you know, maybe a young manager who, who's grown up, who's growing up in this, maybe deals with it even better than, than somebody who's like me, you know, sort of come through different eras of, of how managers are assessed. And you mentioned about the difference between the trophy in the last few seasons. Are you telling me that sort of you need to, I mean, you've often consistently said it's about creating sustainable success for the team to compete at the top level. It's not just about winning trophies. I mean, I might need to, in a way, a bit of an example of that because they have won a trophy the last few years and yet it's not like a kid to win it or little to it. It's top of the under pressure anyway. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, I think if Eric hadn't have won anything last year, they'd be saying, oh, he's just got to win something and everything will be all right. But I, I don't know. It's probably why I rail against it because it's a trap you can fall into to thinking, oh, well, all I have to do is win something and everyone's going to love me and everyone's going to think oh, I'm doing a great job. But like I said, that, that doesn't exist. I think and that's why, you know, I keep saying the focus is try and build a, a group that can have the opportunity for sustainable success. I think you need to do that because success isn't guaranteed. But if you can create something that gives you the opportunity for it on a year on year basis, then you know, I think you've got more chance of, of kind of creating um, you know, a period where, where, where the club can sort of undeniably see itself as a contender. I've got no idea. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, it's... it's uh, a lot of it's just sort of, you know, groupthink these days of just people just... I, I, I don't know how many people actually watch. You know, I, I think a lot of the opinions are just people who hear something and then pile on and it becomes this... And how many actually watch, you know, um, what they're giving an opinion on, you know, really detailed. So... You know, if Timo's career ended tomorrow, he's had a hell of a career. Oh, there's some substance there. It's not, you know, so th he's a good footballer. He's a good international footballer. He's had, you know, scored goals at the highest level. So that's why we, we want him part of our group. Now, OK, at the moment, yeah, people say, well, he hasn't really made an impact this year. But he hasn't played a lot either. Um, so let's assess him, you know, after he's had a decent run of games. But I, I don't know, like, why, why people... You know, like I said, um, it doesn't seem to be any grey area. It's kind of black and white. You're either great or you're useless. And, and you know, again, I, I think if you end up responding to that kind of stuff, you know, as an individual, you, you'll go nuts, mate. Tom? Um, uh, the red card obviously did phase things. Um, No, but I think, you know, he'll, he'll know that. Um, as I said before, um, you know, we, we, we entrusted him with starting a really important game for us, so he knows how we feel about him. So it's a tactical decision. He was disappointed. I expect, you know, expect him to be disappointed. But as I keep saying, that's, uh, he's going to have plenty of moments like that in his career. It's always about how you respond to those things, how you grow from those things. And... Um, he was training this morning, mate, and he was he was flying. He was no problem, so he's all good. And I just wonder, ahead of phase of Manchester United, with with these matches against traditional, you know, traditionally the biggest clubs in in the country, in, when you look at what you're doing with your project, are these sorts of matches quite good for you to judge as a barometer of, of, of how you, you know, what the trajectory is? Um, yeah, for, for different reasons. I mean, I think yeah, you know, every game's a kind of chance to to, to measure. <laughs> to measure your progress but yeah I think when you play against a, a you know a, a team like United at 
you know, Old Trafford is it's a good measure of sort of because, like I said, it, it's a it's a unique experience of playing at, at such a venue with with you know pretty um, vocal home support. So I think gives you an opportunity to see you know how the group's progressing under those kind of circumstances and uh, against a good opponent. So, but uh, like I said, I think that the barometer is always there every game. I think last night we, we learned a bit about ourselves as well and. Yeah, we learn a bit of ourselves on the weekend. So I think every game gives you that opportunity. Thanks for that, please. Thanks. Um, one more on Sonic, if I may. Um, you do you feel like asking him to stop playing for South Korea? Oh, mate, no, no chance. Um, no, because I think, again, I, I, I understand how important it is for him. I mean... Yeah, you know, we, we can, again, we can look at these things in, in sort of just the cold harsh light of you know he's he's you know club football will benefit if he doesn't play for his country but one day he won't be able to play for his country and and the last thing I'd want is for him to have regrets that he, he you know he, he missed out an opportunity to play as much as he could and represent it so um, but I think all these decisions are better off being left to to the player themselves, because they know themselves, you know, how they're feeling about their career. Um, you know, the, the, it doesn't matter how long you play for, this, the, the, the lifespan of a professional footballer is, is still fairly short in terms of, you know, how long you live your life. So that time you have, you, you want to try and get as fulfilled as you possibly can. You know, you're trying to create, create as much of, a basket of memories as you can because one day you won't have that opportunity so I will I would never be the one to say to him look you know you know for selfish reasons for for us as a club it'd be great if you didn't play for your country I just wouldn't do it can I ask about Old Trafford as well yeah would you still feel like going to Old Trafford if the stadium was 500 yards to the left <laughs> <laughs> and not called Old Trafford um I, I don't know. Uh, good question. I mean, I guess we went through it. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and, and, and it's probably, I'm probably not the right person to ask. Yeah, it's probably a question for sort of Tottenham supporters or Tottenham people to say, well, does the new stadium feel the same as the older? It, it, it's, it, it's hard to say. Um, I think the way football's going, there's an inevitability about it in terms of clubs, you know, building new stadiums um, just purely on you know economics more than anything else um, and you'd like to hope that within that context that it still maintains some of the magic that exists within you know the the old sort of stadium the old arena but no, no, hard for me to say mate um, yeah don't know Yeah, yeah, I did, definitely, mate. I, I keep saying I'm still a fan. I, I still love the game. I, so, I mean, anyone who's seen me will know that you know, every time I go into a away venue, was, the first thing I do is walk out on the pitch before everyone's in the stadium, irrespective of what stadium it is. But obviously certain ones have more significance. And, yeah, I just just for that moment, just I do it, breathe it in and say, well, you know, one day I can sit back in my, my lounge chair and, and kind of think, yeah, you know, I had a, I had a walk around. Yeah, you know, that stadium and hopefully have a good memory because we won. You know, that's the main thing. But yeah, I, I, I still uh, I, I love the sense of history and tradition because it's what um, gave me my love of the game. Which do you like best? Though? Which one? Which, which do you like mm. best? Which lived up to you? The Maracanã. Uh, we played Manchester United there uh, when I was South Melbourne. Old stadium, like falling to bits, but just. It was heaving by the time we got out there with, with fans and just, yeah, thinking of the Brazilian team, the Pelé and, like, just the games that had been played in there uh, and the fact that it hadn't been redone probably still had that history around it. I, yeah, it gave me goosebumps walking out there. Which one of the things is going to fall with Flags of Sorry. Don't apologise, mate. Um, uh, question without notice. Um... I think for a game, maybe the old Wembley. Yeah, because again, I grew up watching FA Cups and stuff, and um, by the time sort of 
Oh, God, yeah, that was gone. Was it? Yeah. That really yeah. was falling apart. Yeah. Well, that's burst small pump. I'm thinking something else. I don't know if you can clarify this, but with Sonny, you said he was tired. Is it pre-injury to his tiredness? No, no, he, he, he sort of felt fatigue sort of in his hamstring. That was the, the reason he went down. But, you know, whether it's that's an injury or just fatigue, we've just got to wait and see. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week.